black stone mirror uh, where, where the, the, the witch and um, in, in Ireland there's no, there's no native term for witch. There's the ban fassa, which means wise woman. Um, in Irish, the word for, for uh, magic is driocht, which is druidry. So the, the idea of the, the spell casting witch, you know, with the cauldron and all of this, didn't come into Ireland until the 12th century with the, the Anglo Normans. Um, so, anyway, the, like a, an obsidian mirror or a crystal ball. Um, it's the same kind of idea that somebody with a power to see into the future or to receive messages from the other world or the spirit realm would look into this and see messages that other people can't see. So in the Irish tradition, that, that power, that ability is called the second sight. So it's like a, an additional sight to what we can normally see. And in French, it's similar with the word clairvoyant, which is literally clear seeing. And um, that you can see like everybody else, but you can also see this extra dimension or world or whatever you want to call it. Um, and just to mention as well about the word occult, um, people tend to be afraid of the occult. But occult just refers to ocular, the eye, and what's hidden from the eye. So from what's hidden from normal, normal sight. So um, Samhain is traditionally a time for uh, doing those kind of customs to tell, tell fortunes um, and also to try, and, to try and tell what your luck will be in the year to come. And the traditional food, another traditional thing to eat at Samhain, uh, because it's a, uh, I mentioned Lunasa as the harvest festival on August 1st. So then it's like a second harvest at Samhain, uh, but more to do, like Luna says, to do with the grain, the grain harvest, like bread and, and so on. And Samhain then is not the crops in the fields, but it's the uh, nuts and um, apples and, and things like that. And uh, what you make with fruit and nuts is called a barm brack. So in Irish it's barin brack. And this is also uh, a divinatory custom and nowadays there is uh, a ring in it so again that's to do with marriage but um, the reason is well the one reason that there's only a ring uh, is very well packaged and it says it on the outside that there's a ring so there's a choking hazard if people are going to sell something uh, with something in it that you could choke on um, but there's also other reasons why the traditional things in it changed and uh, one of the things that you could have in the brack was a stick um, and like a tiny, uh, like more like a splinter um, and the person who got that in their slice was supposed to be beaten by the marriage partner so obviously the cultural norms changed and that, that was taken out of the brack by the time it got to selling it, to manufacturing it. So other things that used to be in it, um, a pea meant uh, wealth, um, sorry, a bean meant wealth, a pea meant poverty. There could also be a rag, like a tiny rag for poverty. So if you got that in your slice, it meant bad luck was coming in the coming year. But also there would have been um, a, a little religious medal. So the person who got that in their slice, it meant there would be a priest or a nun. Um, so uh, that changed over time, but the other, the other customs are also changing and taking on new, new uh, kind of layers, if you like, as time goes on, um, and continuing to change because now, um, even in terms of the costumes, I mentioned people can dress up as celebrities. That's a relatively new thing. Um, having Halloween parties is relatively new in terms of the, the cultural uh, trends or um, things that people do. Uh, so it's changing all the time. And just to explain how it became Halloween, uh, the, so you have the Samhain festival, the Feast of the Dead, in the different Celtic regions, and you have in the Catholic, the Roman Catholic calendar, you have uh, two different feast days. So you have All Saints, which is on November 1st, when Catholics are supposed to pray for the the souls of the dead in heaven and to venerate different saints um, 
and on the 2nd of November you have All Souls Day where Catholics um, are meant to pray for the, 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 the souls uh, of more recently deceased people. So especially souls in purgatory. And in the kind of popular or folk Catholicism, you have the belief that the souls in purgatory need the prayers of the living in order to send them on to, to heaven, you know, that they're cleansed and that they can be with God. But it's interesting that you have this already existing Feast of the Dead at Samhain in all the Celtic regions and in other parts of the world, as I mentioned, um, even though it's not called Samhain, but it's still <coughs> the Feast of the Dead. Um, the Catholic festival or feast day of All Souls was moved from, I think it was in May, to the 2nd of November. So it's quite close to the already existing uh, Feast of the Dead. So it's not, I'm not sure whether that was an intentional uh, moving of the festival or not. Uh, sometimes there is an intentional um, replacement of older festivals and so on um, and sacred places but sometimes it's not intentional, it could be just um, they kind of mix together as a, as a more um, organic process because people uh, going right back in time to when Christianity came to Ireland first uh, you had a mixing together of pagan and Christian that continued on then in what we call folk religion and in the Irish 